Um, thank you for joining us for today's briefing. I want to start, uh, start first by welcoming uh, the Erie County Executive Mark Polencars. I'm also joined here in my, uh, my Monroe County Health Director, Mike, Dr. Michael Mendoza, and by the Chief Medical Officer of the University of Rochester Medical Center, Dr. Michael Apostolakis, and the Chief Medical Officer of the Rochester Regional Healthcare System, Dr. Robert Mayo. And like I said before, we're also joined today by our counterparts and the team in Erie County who are so happy to work so closely with as it comes to fighting COVID-19 in our communities. And I wanna toss it over uh, to County Executive Mark Polencars to introduce his team that's joined us today uh, from Erie County. Thank you, County Executive Bello. It is good to be here, though I really wish we weren't because we have some information that we do need to share with the public that we think is applicable for all of the regions of Western New York and the Finger Lakes. Uh, I will be joined, uh, and you will hear from soon, our uh, health commissioner, Dr. Gail Burstein. We also have the chief medical officers for the four major hospital systems in our region, uh, Dr. Hans Kassengold, the executive vice president and chief uh, physician uh, for the Catholic Health System, uh, Dr. Michael Minio, uh, the Chief Medical Officer for Buffalo General Hospital, Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital, the Kaleida Health System, uh, Dr. Brian Murray, the uh, Chief Medical Officer for the Erie County Medical Center Corporation, and Dr. Stephen Turkovich, the uh, Vice President and Chief Millard, uh, Chief Medical Officer for uh, the John R. O'Shai Children's Hospital in Buffalo. Uh, as I noted, we, we have some uh, serious information to cover. Uh, with regards to the rapid growth of COVID-19. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to County Executive Bellow uh, to begin the, the discussion. Great. Thank you, County Executive. And um, as County Executive Polengars uh, noted, he and I have come together uh, to raise awareness and concern about our rapidly increasing COVID infection rates. And what's more concerning, the corresponding spike in hospitalizations. We both recognize this is a regional problem, and this is a regional call to action for Western New York. While County Executive Polling Cars will speak to the specifics in Erie County, and I'll speak about Monroe County, the picture we describe is very similar. Today in Monroe County, we're reporting 347 new cases of COVID. Over the weekend on Saturday, we saw a high of 515 new cases. Our seven-day rolling average is 418. Just one month ago, we reported 241 cases in a seven day average of 218. If we go back a year ago though, on this date, we were at 260 cases in a seven day average of just 238. Along with our case rates, our community is seeing an increasing number of people hospitalized. Last year at this time in the Finger Lakes region, we had 184 people hospitalized with COVID and 33 in the ICU. Just one month ago, we were at 229 hospitalized and 52 patients in the ICU. As of this weekend, we're at 289 people hospitalized and 82 in the ICU. These numbers paint a clear and concerning picture of what's happening. We're yet again seeing an increase in infection rates and hospitalization rates due to a number of causes. The return to school, the new college semester, colder weather, more indoor gatherings, and of course the Delta variant. These increases are a major concern and we do not want a repeat of last year when we saw continued increases, strains on our hospital systems and restrictions imposed by the state of New York. Now is the time to double down on what we know works, bring down our case numbers and corresponding hospitalizations. What I'm asking our residents to return to vigilance and here's how, and you'll see this is all common sense. First and foremost, get vaccinated. This is without question, the most important thing each of us can do to end this pandemic. If it's been six months since your Pfizer or Moderna vaccine and you qualify, get your booster shot. If it's been two months since you got the one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine, get the booster shot. You can make an appointment by visiting our websites. If you have a child between the ages of five and 11, now you too can get them vaccinated. The, most, the next most important step we can all take is to wear a mask in public indoor locations. Whether you're shopping at the grocery store or gathering with friends, even if you're vaccinated, Masking can help stop the spread of infections as an important mitigation tool that has been proven effective. And finally, if you're feeling sick or showing symptoms, stay home, call your doctor, and seek a test to rule out COVID. These are common sense mitigation strategies that worked in the past to bring down our curve and will work again if we all participate. The holidays are upon us. We are 10 days out from Thanksgiving and the kickoff to a time of year when we all wanna be spending time with friends and family. 
We wanna be healthy again. So we're able to bring together confidently and safely our loved ones from across generations. The vast majority of people who are going to be quarantined or in isolation on Thanksgiving aren't even sick yet. Think of that. Now is when we double down on strategies to remain healthy, get vaccinated, mask indoors, and stay home if you're sick. Finally, we may be asking why we have increased hospitalizations where more than 70% of our residents are vaccinated. The doctors are gonna go into more detail, but here's the stark reality. The clear majority of people hospitalized for COVID are not vaccinated. Eight of 10 people in ICU with COVID are not vaccinated. Nine out of 10 people on ventilators due to COVID are not vaccinated. You have 10 times the risk of being hospitalized if you are not vaccinated. Masking and vigilance will help stem the short-term spike in both infection rates and hospitalizations. But the long-term answer is clear and it's simple. It's vaccination. Get your children vaccinated, vaccinate yourself. And if you are ready for a booster, now is the time to sign up. And now I'll turn it over to County Executive Mark Polakars. Thank you, County Executive Bellow, and I do appreciate your comments because they are exactly the same as mine as it pertains to Erie County in Western New York. Uh, if your uh, team can share the first slides that we shared with you earlier today, I'd like to go into the most recent case history in Erie County. Uh, this is as of uh, yesterday, and you can see we are in a fourth spike. There is no doubt about it. We had our initial spike at the beginning of last year, the increase last fall, then the drop. And then of course we saw a spike again in March and April. We actually are seeing cases and rate totals uh, in most recent days that are higher than what we saw in the spring. Uh, that the highest line that you see on the screen there was 714 new cases that were reported on the 12th of November. There was a drop the last two days, but the positivity rate did not drop. Uh, so what we did is we had less people actually getting tested those two days which ended up with less results, but the positivity rate in itself did not drop. If you go to the next screen, the next slide, excuse me, you will see the, the positivity report for Erie County and how we have seen some spikes. Uh, unfortunately, the most recent day did not make it in time to the slide, but it actually was 9.7% for yesterday. So while we had 369 cases yesterday, the positivity rate was 9.7%, the highest it's been uh, in many, many months. So we are seeing continued growth in cases across our region. And it's quite evident when you go to the next slide, which is cases in the past seven days per 100,000 residents, you see that line continues to grow. Uh, we are over 300 new cases uh, per 100,000 residents, approximately 350 uh, for the last seven days. And this, unfortunately, also is the same type of trajectory we are seeing with our hospitalizations. Hospitalizations in Erie County have increased significantly in the last week or two. But one of the things I'm hearing from the hospital systems is not just all Erie County residents that are being hospitalized and unfortunately dying, because we have seen uh, quite a number of deaths in our local hospitals associated with COVID-19. If you go to the next slide, this is a breakdown as reported by New York State of the Finger Lakes and Western New York regions uh, as it pertains to case rates on a daily basis as well as a seven day period for all of the counties in what would be considered Western New York and the Finger Lakes. And unfortunately, some of the counties with the highest case rates and, and positivity rates are the counties in between Erie and Monroe County like Orleans, Genesee, Wyoming, or in our southern tier, uh, Cattaraugus and Allegheny, which also have correspondingly lower vaccination rates compared to Erie and Monroe counties. I bring this up because I want people to understand this is not a Buffalo or Rochester issue. This is an issue for all of Western New York and the Finger Lakes. And actually the case rates and new case uh, rates over a seven day period are actually worse in areas where you would normally think they would be better because you would actually have a less dense population living in Orleans and Genesee and Wyoming, Cattaraugus, Allegheny counties. There's less people living there and there's less people living there per square mile by a lot compared to Erie and Monroe. And we want people to understand that the cases that we're seeing are not just urban cases or suburban cases, they're also rural cases. And unfortunately, a number of individuals who died in Erie County hospitals in the last two weeks 
We're not Erie County residents, but we're residents of these other counties. And that's why we think it's very important that this message get out. That number one, if you have not been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Especially those now that we have the opportunity to vaccinate the five to 11 year olds. If you were vaccinated and fully vaccinated more than six months ago with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, or two months with the Johnson & Johnson, get a booster. We'll boost you. No questions asked as long as you're over the age of 18 and it's been more than six months since you got the Pfizer or Moderna completed or two months since the Johnson & Johnson. Truly, we need people when they're in public locations inside where they cannot otherwise safely socially distance to mask. We know that a lot of these cases are resulting from individuals going to private parties and private gatherings in homes. We need you to be uh, careful. And as Dr. Burstein will talk about soon, it's probably smart to know where your status is to get tested beforehand. And we want people to understand that none of us are interested in implementing mandates like we saw in the past. So we're asking our public to please act appropriately. This will protect our community and it will certainly help our healthcare heroes who've been working almost nonstop for two years now. And unfortunately in Erie County, the hospitalization rates with bed capacity have been at about 90% in the last couple of weeks. That's why it's important that people understand that we're not doing this just for ourselves, but we wanna protect our healthcare heroes who truthfully have gone through a lot over the last two years and are burning out. We need to protect them by keeping our hospitalization rates low. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to our health commissioner, Dr. Burstein, so that she can talk a little bit more about what's going on in Erie County. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, County Executive. So let me uh, share with you uh, what we're seeing in Erie County just in terms of COVID-19. So as you all know, uh, Erie County is experiencing an acceleration of new daily COVID-19 cases and weekly case totals that we haven't seen since the peak of the previous uh, COVID-19 wave. Our total of 714 cases in one day on November 12th was extreme and speaks to a general widespread community transmission happening right now. Our regional positivity rate, and that's the proportion of COVID-19 tests that were positive each day is up there with the Finger Lakes and our friends in Monroe County have the highest in the state right now. We know from experience what follows high numbers of new cases increases in hospitalizations, and very sadly, some of these people will die and will see additional COVID-19 associated deaths. Within Erie County, there are people who are very vulnerable to moderate and severe illness if they were exposed to COVID-19. So that's, we all know these people. They're older adults, people with immunocompromising conditions, including taking medications, and pregnant women and new moms. So that's why we, we are strongly encouraging people who are eligible for booster doses or third doses of COVID-19 vaccine to go to get that additional dose for that additional needed protection. We hear a lot that COVID-19 doesn't affect kids that much. And from what we know now, although most children are less likely to develop severe illness, they are all likely to transmit infection to other people in their house or who are close to them. Remember, even though children may not feel ill with COVID-19 infection, they are still little infectious disease vectors and transmit infections to other around them, just like they do with every other single respiratory illness. And um, I can tell you that among our children in Erie County, it's the 45% that are not fully vaccinated that contribute to 85% of infections of, among children zero to 17 years. So children who are vaccinated are protected. And now we have the opportunity to get those kids five to 11 year olds protected. And our CMOs here today can tell you that they have seen severe COVID-19 cases in children and that household transmission can increase the risk of very poor outcomes for older adults in the family. And my pediatric colleagues in the community have told me that they've seen long hauler cases among their pediatric patients who are affected for months. So although also in Erie, the Erie County Department of Health pediatricians and pharmacies have been vaccinating the five to 11 year old population over the past week and a half. It will be months before we have good coverage and full vaccination for this group. 
So I understand pandemic, pandemic fatigue is real. I'm feeling it too. And it's intense. We are living through another holiday season in the shadow of this pandemic, but with one significant change. Now we have a safe and effective vaccine to protect us all. So going into this winter, we know we have tools to protect our community, and they are very basic that we've been doing for a long time. Vaccinate, wear a mask, stay home and away from others, and if you are sick, and test. Testing is still a vital tool. With the wide availability of COVID-19 laboratory PCRs and home tests, it's easy to test yourself and your family members. So if you choose a home test, please take that test at least two, twice during the past, during over two or three days before you go out to a holiday gathering or, or family get together or any type of power party, just to ensure that there no infection is missed because these home tests are not as sensitive as a laboratory based PCR test that we get. So before I turn it over to my friend and colleague, Dr. Mendoza from Monroe County, I'd like to invite the chief medical officers and other physician leaders in our community who are on this call to share briefly comments. So again, I'll introduce, we have Dr. Hans Kozignal, the chief executive chief of executive of vice president and chief physician executive at Catholic Health, uh, Dr. Mike Minio, the chief medical officer of Buffalo General Hospital and Miller Fillmore Suburban Hospital and the Kaleida Healthcare System, Dr. Brian Murray, the chief medical officer of, of Erie County Medical Center, and Dr. Steve Turkovich, the vice president and chief medical officer of a, a John o Oshai Children's Hospital. So I just like to open it up to any of my uh, uh, chief medical officer colleagues to speak. Hi, this I know is Dr. Mike Minio. Hi, this is Dr. Mike Minio from Buffalo General Medical Center and Miller Fillmore Suburban. Right now, we have 505 inpatients in a hospital built for 456 patients. We're at 110 percent capacity. Of that, about 10 percent of them is COVID positive. The message can't be stressed enough to protect yourself, protect your family because our systems are strained. As uh, Mr. Polenkar said, our staff is exhausted. Please do everything we can to protect ourselves. The system just can't handle anymore. And I also second that. Uh, thank you again, uh, Executive Polenkar and Dr. Bergson, to actually invite us uh, in representing the Catholic Health System. Uh, over the past few weeks or so, uh, to say the numbers have been increased drastically uh, is actually an understatement. And the vast majority of those numbers are, are actually the unvaccinated by far. Uh, it was seeing numbers that are similar to last November. The number of newly diagnosed cases that we see as a system is as high as it was in April. And I believe Executive Polanco actually mentioned that also. Uh, the unvaccinated seems to be approximately 15 to 20 years younger in our health system than it is compared to the vaccinated. And to add to that, uh, when you compare the unvaccinated, the amount of immunosuppressive medical condition they have is farly uh, a, a greater compared to the vaccinated population as a whole. So to say it in another word, uh, the older population, usually that we're seeing with COVID-19, actually is vaccinated with more complexities. But yet the unvaccinated population is far younger with very few uh, a medical complication as a whole. Uh, if there's one thing that we really want to force is really restress the message that we're talking about, which is vaccination safe lives, vaccination is key. Social distancing is still a key for us, unfortunately, because of such a significant amount of our population is still unvaccinated. Until we hit herd, herd immunity, it's still going to be key for us as a whole. And last but not least, uh, we have to be pushing boosters also. Uh, so many of us, including myself, have gotten my booster because I've been graded in six more six months or more since the first uh, series of the tours. At the end of the day, the one thing that we want to do consistently is really to remind our population at large, there is a very good reason to get vaccinated. The very first one is really for your loved ones. There's no better way for you to protect your loved ones against COVID-19 is by getting vaccinated. And by our loved ones, usually most people think about their children. Dr. Bernstein just mentioned that the vast majority of children that are getting COVID-19 are unvaccinated. Please do protect yourself. You don't want to be a vector for them. Our elderly fall into that same category. 
And last but not least, uh, one of the things that I usually don't push, but I think for our populace, we really need to make sure we stress that. If we want to go back to life, whatever it was before COVID-19, all of us need to get vaccinated if we're actually able to get vaccinated. So we really need to do it for our community at large. And last but not least, our economy has suffered from this enormously. So until most of us get vaccinated, our economy will continue to suffer. And I'll actually close by saying thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be in this forum and really vaccination save lives. Thank you, Dr. Bersin, and thank you, Executive Paul and Carl. Uh, the situation is very similar at ECMC at the risk of sounding like a broken record. Obviously, every staffed bed uh, we have in the hospital is occupied. And in addition, we have any given day, 30 patients backed up in our emergency room uh, waiting for beds in the hospital. Uh, what's happening in terms of the increase in cases is eerily similar to what we experienced last November, except we, as Mike pointed out earlier, we are not in a good shape to handle such a surge. Our, our hospitals are overstressed. We've had uh, attrition of staff through burnout and so forth. So uh, you really don't want to be getting sick and being hospitalized with this because one in 10 of the patients that are hospitalized with COVID expire in the hospital. So I, all I can do is endorse uh, everything that's being said. And I had the interesting experience of being in New York City a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that is the only area in the country that's ex or in the state that's continuing to experience a decrease in cases. Uh, I was impressed with uh, people's adherence, the high vaccination rate, people's adherence to social distancing and mask wearing. And I can say it was the first time I felt safer in New York City than in Buffalo. Hi, this is Dr. Turkovich, the, Osh the Oshai Children's Hospital Chief Medical Officer. I do want to echo some of the things that Gail has said about the pediatric perspective. Um, as, as we know, the most important thing we can do to protect ourselves, our community, and those who are less than five and not eligible to be vaccinated is to please get vaccinated. Uh, we're starting to see a younger population of children admitted to the hospital with COVID. Uh, to put that in perspective, since November 1st, we've had 10 children admitted to the hospital. Seven of them are less than five years old, and all of them contracted COVID by a, from a family member who was positive with COVID, who was unvaccinated, whether that be a parent or an older child. Uh, we're also starting to see an increasing number of children admitted to the pediatric ICU with COVID. Thus far this month, we've had five admitted. Uh, last month, we had a total of five. So unfortunately, that rate is going up. And to put this in perspective for the, for the pandemic, we've had almost 200 children admitted to the hospital with COVID since March of 2020. Um, and we've had over 50 of them requiring the pediatric intensive care unit. So although most children have a very mild illness, there is a good number of them that will go on to develop a severe enough illness to be hospitalized. Um, and as Dr. Burstein said, upwards of 10% or more of children who have COVID, many of them who have mild or even asymptomatic infection initially may go on to develop long COVID syndrome. Uh, so it's really important to please, please, please get vaccinated. Get your booster if you're eligible. It's so important to do it today because as we enter into the holidays, we are gonna be potentially uh, exposing others who are immunocompromised or, um, or others who don't have a very good response to the vaccine. So the most important thing we can do to keep our, sa our, our community safe, ourselves safe, and also keep our kids in school. Once your children are fully vaccinated, if they are asymptomatic and exposed to a person with COVID, they no longer need to quarantine. That was one of the major reasons why I personally got my two boys vaccinated the day it became available. Please don't wait. Please get vaccinated. Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you to my hospital colleagues. So now I'm going to turn the baton over to Dr. Michael Mendoza uh, from the Monroe County Health Department, our, my commissioner and our colleague and friend and the Monroe County Chief Medical Officers. Thank you, Dr. Burstein, and good afternoon to members of the media joining us here today. Since March of last year, communities across upstate New York have been grappling with an unprecedented public health challenge. COVID-19 has affected every aspect of our lives and it has taken many lives. The vast majority of us did the right things and we based our decisions on science, facts, and truth. We hunkered down, we wore masks, and we practiced social distancing. 
and we got vaccinated to the tune of more than 700,000 people in the Finger Lakes region alone and counting. So we are left wondering why. Why today are we still seeing case numbers that are rising? We are left wondering if the things we did mattered. Well, I'm here to tell you without question, our efforts did matter and they still matter. It is very difficult, if not impossible, to quantify the outcome of prevention efforts. We cannot yet come up with the exact number of cases that were averted by a mask. We cannot count the precise number of serious illnesses that did not occur due to a vaccine. And we cannot know if the loved one sitting across from us at the dinner table tonight might not be there tonight were it not for the collective efforts that we made to battle this virus. But I have no doubt that we would be facing a much greater hardship today were it not for the sacrifices and the responsible actions that we all took to prevent, protect ourselves, to protect our loved ones, and to protect our community. Above all else, I want to thank you all for making the difference that you have made. I also have to ask you not to let down your guard yet. Even with the vast majority of eligible adults vaccinated in our community, we are still seeing a surge in cases among both the unvaccinated and the vaccinated. We have more daily case cases today than one year ago. But I wanna caution you not to assume that cases are all that matter. In fact, a case last year when we had no vaccine means something very different than now when we have a highly effective vaccine. 2021 is a new stage of the pandemic. And as we look ahead to when COVID becomes endemic, we need to keep our focus on preventing serious illness and death. That starts with preventing cases, but it does not stop there. We also need to prevent hospitalizations. And unfortunately, we are experiencing a related and concerning increase in the hospitalization rate, especially among unvaccinated individuals. We can trace this to several factors. Last year, the Delta variant had not made its way to our region. This variant has proven to be much more opportunistic and it spreads much more easily whenever the opportunity presents itself. We let our guard down, giving it that opportunity. We got tired of wearing masks in public spaces and we got tired of limiting our gatherings. Some of us decided if enough other people got vaccinated, we didn't have to do the same. We let our guard down too soon. And although the vaccines remain just as good at preventing serious illness and hospitalization, they are slowly losing their effectiveness at preventing cases, cases that might or might not cause serious illness, cases that might or might not be spread to someone else who is more vulnerable. This is not a surprise, it was expected. We just did not know the timetable, but the time to get your booster shot is here or fast approaching. So this combination of factors, the Delta variant, letting our guard down too quickly, and the decline in vaccine efficacy has led us to this point in the pandemic. We are at a place where we need to make conscious decisions based on the science available to us today. We do not need to shut everything down, but we do need to wear our masks when we might be at risk or putting others at risk of contracting the virus. We do need to consider where we gather, who we are gathering with, and the size of our gatherings. We do need to recognize the unquestionable value of vaccination and its proven ability to protect us from hospitalization or death. And we do need to remember that we have the power to change, to take charge of our health. We do have the power to control the virus rather than to let it to control us. Now, as we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving, I want to express my gratitude for all that we have accomplished together during the course of this pandemic. And I sincerely and respectfully ask you to join me and the others on this panel as we collectively move forward, armed with all of the knowledge that we have gained to date. Thank you. And now I wanna introduce my colleagues from here in Rochester, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Michael Apostolakis from UR Medicine and Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Robert Mayo from Rochester Regional Health. Thank you, Dr. Mendoza. I, I just have a few uh, brief comments. Um, I wanna echo the effectiveness and safety of our vaccines for COVID-19. Um, not only am I CMO for the University of Rochester Medical Center, but I'm an intensivist and I have the privilege this week of, of uh, being the attending on our COVID ICU. Uh, despite uh, over 70% of our uh, adult population being vaccinated for um, COVID-19, over 80% of the patients in our ICU who have COVID are not vaccinated. The not vaccinated patients in our ICU with COVID are younger, generally in their 50s, as opposed to the few 
vaccinated patients in our ICU who are usually 75 or older. The vaccination is protective um, and it prevents severe illness. If you're thinking about getting vaccinated, please do. I talk with patients, uh, those who can talk to me, and family members who didn't realize how sick they could become with COVID despite not having comorbidity. Um, and they wish they had to uh, make the choice over again because they would have made a different choice. Our ICUs are stressed, our hospitals are stressed, and vaccination of the rest of our population could help with that. And not only am I talking about COVID illness, what I'm concerned about is beds being utilized for preventable disease that we could use for non-COVID illness. And I'm concerned about harm that could occur uh, if we don't stem the tide here with patients with non-COVID illness. So please protect yourself, protect your families, protect your communities, and protect your healthcare heroes who are doing everything they can every day to help our community and help save lives. So thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Rob Mayo, the Chief Medical Officer of Rochester Regional Health, and I'm pleased to join this uh, panel of esteemed medical and governmental colleagues. The voice that you have heard us speak with today is one of, of unity and one of consistency about the importance of all measures to fight the COVID-19 pan, COVID pandemic. So all that has been said previous to, um, to me, I, I endorse. And I ask the community and all the citizens of our regions to, to similarly act in unity and in um, consideration for your neighbors and your family to move forward and fully um, embrace the, vac the vaccination um, opportunity that, you, that we each have to preserve our health and to make a major difference in this pandemic. Thank you. Okay, very good. I think uh, with that, we're set to